Hey, my name is Lizzie Smiley, and I absolutely love helping people connect with their calling and all the tools they need to kick roadblocks and excuses right out the door so they can cultivate the life they dream about. If you want to launch, grow, pivot, or scale your Etsy shop, or you've always wanted to develop the mindset and skills to run your own business, then I'm your girl. I've had that entrepreneurial spirit going strong since my very first lemonade stand, and now I'm a work-at-home mama with multiple online companies and a full-time Etsy shop, all while being present with my kids for the everyday chaos and most important milestones. On this podcast, we'll talk about all things business, mindset, Etsy, creativity, dazzling our customers, and so much more. There's plenty of room at this table for you, so scooch on in and let's go. I'm holding nothing back. Welcome to How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, hey, welcome back to the show, How to Sell Your Stuff fam. I'm excited to be with you again this week. I have been enjoying and look forward to more feedback about last week's episode where we celebrated the 100th podcast episode of How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. Cannot believe it. It's surreal. And yet at the same time, it feels like it should maybe be the thousandth. I can't decide. But if you missed it, my sister came on to interview me um, and it was an absolute hoot. And we got to talk about all kinds of fun Etsy stuff and like things that I've learned and what uh, what advice I have and what I see happening in the future. It was a really fun conversation. So check that out if you haven't already. That was a riot and it was just so fun to celebrate. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is um, we have an FAQ episode coming up soon. So make sure that you submit your question if you have one or questions, plural, and there will be a link down in the show notes where you can click it and just submit in a little very simple survey what your FAQ is and we'll try to hit it on the upcoming episode. But today, I just had so much fun um, recording with our guest. So um, last year, like early, early 2022, um, the founder of my favorite tool, Everbee, uh, came onto the podcast. And it was a newer app at that time. And I was just getting to know him. And since then, it has such had such an overhaul. So if you guys have been around for, at all, um, there are thir- two third-party tools that I recommend for Etsy. One is Sales Samurai and one is Everbee. The way Everbee is going, I'm thinking we're not even going to need Sales Samurai in the future. But for right now, they're a really good tandem pair. But um, I just had the best chat with Cody. He has an amazing e-commerce background. Like, I just love this guy. I love a really humble, brilliant man. You know what I mean? Like, in our world, that is a beautiful thing. Plenty of egotistical, brilliant men out there, no doubt about it. Women too, but I just like love when someone is just like so incredible, but they're also really humble. I really enjoy Cody. But we also had just the most phenomenal conversation. I had not realized how much Everbee, which is already amazing, has up-leveled in the last year. They've added amazing um, functions that we're going to talk all about. I also completely geek out with Cody because he gets to talk to like the tippy top best Etsy sellers in the world because they use his software. And so he just gets insights that no one else does. And I love hearing what he thinks is happening in the marketplace, you know, what he sees coming down the pike, what he's been noticing with the sellers. It's just a great conversation. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. Literally, we were just catching up and thought it'd be fun if you guys could listen in for a lot of it. So let me tell you a bit about Cody. If you're not familiar, he's the founder of Everbee, the all-in-one business platform for Etsy sellers, helping over 250,000 sellers sell more online. He's an e-commerce seller who sold well over a million dollars worth of sales through various platforms such as Amazon, Walmart, Shopify, and Etsy. He escaped the corporate rat race using e-commerce and he's on a mission to help others do the same. And he's a proud husband and father of two little ones. So, ah, I can't wait to share this with you. It was so much fun. Please help me welcome Cody to the podcast. Hey guys, real quick, a couple of updates have come up. The first thing is a couple, about a month ago, I should say, I opened a digital product shop, um, selling mock-ups. And most of what I am selling in there, I am generating with AI using MidJourney. And it has been a fascinating experience. I stumbled upon this because I was shopping for mock-ups for my print-on-demand shop, and I couldn't believe the amount of money that the the mock-up shops using AI were bringing in every month. And I wanted to just see what it was like. And you guys know how I like to, I do this so I can tell you what the tea is. And so I want to gauge your interest on a workshop. Would you like it if I did a AI, using AI to create digital products 
workshop, you know, specifically talking about mid journey, but I'm sure that we will also get into open AI, chat GPT, some of the other things that I'm using. Um, the shop already has cleared hundred sales. It's been phenomenal. I can't believe the passive income that's coming in. And what's even more exciting for me is like the potential as I grow the listings I have in there. So down in the show notes, there will be a link where you can drop your email. If you are interested in, I, I want to gauge interest first about a workshop. Um, it would be a paid workshop, nothing crazy, a couple hundred dollars though, because um, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of intel, and I'm creating an entire <laughs> entire base of competition, which is completely fine. Like the way I want you guys to thrive, I'm thrilled to do it. So um, put your drop your email in that link in the show notes if you're interested in a AI digital product workshop where I will show you everything I'm doing and you will get mid-journey prompts from me for creating mock-ups, et cetera. The second thing I mentioned to you guys months ago now that I was thinking about sharing a list that I compile for myself of in-demand micro niches. So we always talk about how like, you know, you hear about Etsy so saturated, there's too many competing people, you know, competing shops. And I say, ah, but you've just got to find the micro niches, which are the little smaller pockets of demand inside the bigger niche. So for example, rather than trying to compete in like the mom t-shirt niche, you want to find something like a Taekwondo mom. That would be a micro niche. I have no idea if there's demand there or not. Just FYI, but that's an example of a micro niche. So I compile these as I'm doing research um, every single day in Sales Samurai. And I have hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of like, I have found the places of demand and I, I save them in a document. And so I have 100 of those that I am going to provide free if you just jump on the email list that'll be linked for that below and I will get you that document with some training on how to use it. And then I'm also gonna offer a subscription service. So for $4.99 a month, you can have ongoing live access to my document as I upload it. I will cycle it over 12 months because these numbers change constantly, right? Like you think about it week to week, the number of searches going into Etsy um, in terms like for a particular search item is going to change. And so is are the number of competing listings. So I'm going to update it as I go monthly and just put in whatever data I'm finding. And you can have ongoing access to that for $4.99, $4.99 a month. And that will tell you from Sales Samurai where the really great places are to jump in. Like, <laughs> this is so fun for me to think about this because the success you're going to have and you're not going to have, like, I stumble upon them for my work every day and you can just benefit from it. So if you're interested in the free um, version of that, the 100 free ones, or if you would like the subscription, go ahead and drop your email. All of that is coming out very soon in the next few weeks and you will start to get emails from me on how you can, well, the first thing I'll do is just send out the 100 to everybody and then you can decide from there if you wanna do the subscription as well. So that's the end of the housekeeping. I've been so excited to tell you I didn't wanna wait another week. And so those links to jump on either of those lists are down in the show notes. So let's go jump into the content today. Cody, yay, welcome back to the podcast. I'm really glad I was able to drag you back in. <laughs> Lizzie, super happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me back. Honestly, it was super fun last time and I enjoyed a conversation. I think that lots of people listen to it and got a lot of value and hopefully we could do the same thing. Yes. Well, I'm a huge Everbee fan. They hear me talk about Everbee all the time. And um, also all through my course, it's like, it's like Everbee strategy. So I, and I realized as I was like recording everything for the course that you'd made a lot of updates and changes. I'm like, oh, we need to have Cody back to fill us in yeah. because I don't even completely know. He, and, and I'm just like, you know what? I really want to just talk to Cody and hear about it, but we'll just do it publicly and they can listen in. So I hope you're okay with that. <laughs> totally. Game for anything, game for any questions. Um, I know we're, we're always plugging away and, and, and e-commerce is always like evolving anyway. Right. So it's, it's fun to just kind of get a refresher of Hey, we talked, you know, eight months ago, like where's the market stand today and where's the opportunity today and where's the downfalls today? So totally, totally game for all that. That's amazing. Well, for those of the folks who don't know you yet or are new to the podcast, could you just give a little recap of your story? And then I'll also link the old one so they can hear more. Sure. Yeah. I'm Cody McGuffey. I'm the founder and CEO of Everbee. We are the all-in-one business platform for Etsy sellers to start, to grow, to scale their Etsy business. Uh, we believe that, and I believe that um, anyone that pursues their passions with like an undeniable force of will, that they have a chance to succeed. And we believe in making e-commerce just that simple, right? For anybody to take advantage of this amazing opportunity that we have in today's world. And yeah, it, we're just passionate about it. Honestly, I love talking to business owners, love talking to e-commerce sellers. And 
usually people talk to me, I'm, I'm usually trying to some way convince them to be an entrepreneur to start their own business. And I'm sure a lot of other people can relate to that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a blast to be here. And um, so yeah, we started Everbee two years ago. Uh, we have, we've helped well over 250,000 sellers today um, and, and growing. Uh, sell more on Etsy. And so that is that is our bread and butter is helping people do more of that. We love when people make more money and have those success stories. That's that's what we're all about. We have no, no, no side of slowing down. We'll continue to launch more features to help more people. And this is, this is my full-time thing. This is our entire team's full-time thing. We have a team of over 30 people. And uh, yeah, so we're, uh, this is our life. And you're a husband and a daddy and you live yes. in Texas. Yes. The most important thing, yeah, for sure. I'm I'm married. I have I have a two wonderful children, four four year old boy and a two year old daughter, and I do live in Austin, Texas. Uh, I used to live in California. Moved to Austin recently, and life is great, honestly. Yeah, life is great. Yeah, and then you guys should listen to the the last episode to get some baseline because he was talking about his background in e commerce, which is super interesting as well. Cody Cody's one of those people that I'm like super grateful I get to talk to. <laughs> I just sit there like, wow, thank you God I get to know Cody because he's so full of wisdom and experience. So, um, okay, I really want to start because I think it's been over a year since we. I think it was like last spring, 2022, and I love to get your your read on this. What do you see happening on like the Etsy platform overall? Like what's happening in the marketplace? Um, Are you noticing changes in buyer or seller behavior or habits we should pay attention to? I just want your read on all of that because we haven't talked about it in way too long. Sure. Yeah. I mean, really the opportunity is still massive. It's like people think that I'm still hearing like a lot of people talk about how Etsy is super saturated and, you know, they they give a lot of reasons of why they shouldn't be selling on Etsy. And usually those are the the few people that are the loudest typically, you know, the ones commenting on all the, all the Facebook posts and they're the ones on, on all the comments on YouTube videos and things like that. But the reality is we see the data. Uh, we, we analyze over this, we have like over 40 million Etsy listings inside of our database that we get to look at on a daily basis. This, we, we live in the data and the data is that Etsy sales are growing. Uh, Etsy sellers that are doing the right things, that have the right, right foundation underneath them. They, they practice throughout the right fundamentals of just overall just business and e-commerce success fundamentals. Uh, there is tons of opportunities. Like uh, we're rolling into Q4 now. Or we in, we're in Q4 now at this recording and and we're just seeing numbers that honestly we're not really surprised it's it's definitely not oversaturated though there's so much opportunity there's brand new etsy sellers that started like three months ago yeah doing doing five thousand a month six thousand a month seven thousand a month and way more for sure and they started from zero sales zero sales when they first started their shop so i think the it's i don't think there's anything like hugely different from a year ago than we talked uh Mm -hmm. still people are the people that are are hating on Etsy or or somehow doubting that there's an opportunity there, they just really haven't walked the path yet. And the people that are actually doing it and succeeding in it, they're not really out there raising their hand and saying Etsy's so great, Etsy's so great, Etsy's so great. They're just down with their heads down executing. Yes, as we um, do. So, um, I still see digital digital seller digital uh, digital listings being a huge opportunity. It's still massive. I still see that print on demand is continuing to grow. So anybody that does print on demand, there's a massive opportunity there just because the products are getting so much better too. Yes. And the product selection is getting wider and wider. And that will continue to do that for the next uh, foreseeable future. But the digital products, I would say though, the one shift that I saw from a year ago is that there was a lot of people that were succeeding selling like $1, $2 types of digital files. This is my own anecdotal like my no, own I feedback. love it. This is what I want. Um, <laughs> is I feel like that's that's really hard to succeed there. Yeah. It used to be easier to succeed there, I think, maybe two years ago. But now it's more like the people that are succeeding in the digital space, they're selling like a some sort of template that's like higher value, such as like a fifteen to twenty five dollar type of digital wow. product. And those are the those are the people that are succeeding the most, just considering okay. the you can be more aggressive with ad costs and actually pushing that product and not feeling like you're dipping into your into your costs, I guess. Okay, that's super interesting. So we're seeing like the like an ebook template or a presentation template or um, bigger things like that or a website template, things that are just Correct. more involved. Way more value. And I think that's that's where the opportunity is from a digital side of things. So I, I remember because I, I I did this a few years ago, right before I before I saw Let's see, I was selling like you know, like digital wall art for like a buck, oh, two yeah. bucks, three bucks, right? And that was a thing. 
and got some success, you know, but it's just really hard to build like a sustainable business, like a, a yeah. sustainable side hustle. You can't really do it. It's just, it's really challenging because even if you advertise that thing, it's going to cost you two bucks to get a sale and you sold it for two bucks. And then you, now you're in the, now you're in the negative because you have SEPs and all that stuff. So, uh, but if you sell something like digital product, that's $20, you have a $20 margin you could play with. So big time opportunity. I find them so helpful too. I mean, for almost every project I've done from like course to webinar to, you know, free downloads, I'm always buying those templates off of Etsy because I'm not a designer. I'm not, I'm not great at that. In fact, I probably should become better at it so I could try to sell them so we could talk about this more. But, um, uh, just to just to agree with you, absolutely. I'm really curious, Cody, if you have a sense. I have I have had this feeling for about the last year that there's like a a big push in the handmade space as well, though as like kind of our culture gets back to wanting to touch things. I don't think as many sellers want to sell something handmade. But um, from your end, are you are the searches pretty high still on that, or are your customers like Etsy sellers really focused more on the digital and print on demand? I think we certainly have a mix of handmade sellers and also print on demand. Mm -hmm. I think naturally print on demand is more attractive to the people that um, aren't mm -hmm. necessarily, because handmade is a skill, right? That's, and that yes. takes effort. And it's, there's a reason why those things are valuable because people spend a lot of love and a lot of effort and a lot of energy creating those things. And it was not as scalable, to be honest. I mean, from a business no, perspective, yeah. they're not as scalable. I haven't really looked at the data as far as like search volume and like seeing that trend. Um, personally, I haven't looked at it. But however, I will say that the more people that come in with print on demand, if for if you're a handmade seller and you just like love making handmade tables and handmade furniture and handmade wall art and decor and stuff like that, there's there's a massive opportunity still because yes. again, you're competing against like people that are sellers that are they don't have the product that you do. You have that product. It's very unique, yeah. right? So if, if you're just unique, there's there's a lot of value in that. And if you could personalize it on top of the uniqueness, then it's it's game over. It's not about it's not about the product anymore. It's more so about like, hey, did you did you use did you do pictures that were great? Did you do a title that were great? A description, tags, all this stuff. So if you're a handmade seller listening to this, I mean, there's I think there's always an opportunity for for somebody yeah. like that, to be honest. Yeah. You're gonna be limited by your time, is all it is. That's correct. So you'll yeah, yeah, your production line, right? Your your operations will be the the biggest bottleneck there after you get those sales. Like how are you gonna to continue to scale? And that's a yeah. that's a problem for a future day, right? Don't worry about that until you get those sales. Absolutely. Yeah. Enjoy it. It's, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I, I, after doing it, it's not my first choice, but I have um, an aunt who's obsessed with doing things handmade. So I run a handmade shop through her and then I don't mm -hmm. have to worry. It's like the best of both worlds and I'll sit over here and geek out on the marketing. Okay. So what are a few things you've learned over the past year from working with some of the top sellers um, in the world? Like, yeah, that's something that's so cool about you, Cody is like you're not, you know, on the marketplace anymore directly, but you're, you get to talk to people who move crazy amounts of, of stuff. Like, have you learned anything from them or any thoughts about any like big success stories? I do. I'm always trying to like pull out the, that value from every seller right, that I'm talking to that does the $200,000 a year, $500,000 in a year, the million dollar seller, right? Like there's, there's, I talked to multiple of those and some of those are my good friends at this point. And I'm always trying to pull out like, what are they doing different than, than a lot of other people? And crazy. It's like, they don't do a lot of things different. It's like yeah. 10%, it's like 10% better, you know, than on everything. And they stick in there like 10% longer than anybody else. Um, but certainly like the people that are succeeding, like they, they understand data at, at the data. beginning, like they understand data. Um, when I say understand data, like it's not like they're a data, you know, expert, they're not a data engineer. They can just look at data. They look at numbers enough and they can start seeing, they can start pulling out patterns and then they pull the, then they layer on that data. When they look at some numbers, they layer on the creative hat on top of that data. And then they make good informed decisions that serve the market. Uh, I've recognized this theme with so many sellers that are successful at this point. So that I think it's probably the one main thing that takes, that really separates people. Uh, it's not just an Etsy, by the way, it's, it's pretty much in every, every business. Right. Um, and then the second is like, pictures. I mean, people don't, and it sounds so simple and it sounds so kind of boring. Uh, but yeah. like, if you really pay attention to a, let's say a shop that has a million sales or a hundred thousand sales, if you just look at their, look at their pictures, it's next look, level. At their, look at their images, just look at them and like actually look at them and then compare them to yours. Typically there's a difference and there's subtle differences, but they really make, make, make a huge difference, you know, from a buyer perspective to actually make that, turn that, that shopper into an actual buyer. Uh, so I would say data, 
pictures. There's probably other ones in there too. And then uh, the last thing, which is probably the most important, is um, the mindset. The the mindset of of a a seller that's doing two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand and above per year in revenue, compared to somebody that does ten thousand a month. I'm sorry, ten thousand a year or zero dollars in a year. Yeah. Those those people are completely different people at this point. I'm not saying they're born that way. I'm just saying they've evolved no. so much. Mm-hmm. To where that individual will probably be successful in anything they do. And they just happen to choose Etsy as their vehicle. And so I think the goal is for somebody to that has zero sales today or maybe 10 sales today, if they want to have that 100,000 sales or 10,000 sales or whatever it is, not only what you do needs to change, but also like who you are, your identity needs, your identity needs to shift into a person that you know, earns that 10,000 sales. That makes sense? It's the becoming rather than the doing. Do you have um this that's so that's that's the stuff I geek out about is is the becoming. Um do you have any favorite Okay, first of all, okay, just like segue. First of all, you guys have to check out Cody's podcast which we'll talk about for sure at the end. Awesome. Etsy seller podcast, right Cody? Etsy seller podcast, correct. Okay. And the reason I say that is because if you want to hear like insane stories. I mean, I tend to bring on we have some insane stories too, but I tend to bring on people who are a little earlier in the process and are just starting to have success because those are the people that my listeners can really identify with and sure. they're just like a little behind them. So it's not so far that it's just like Oh, I feel like I'm never going to get there. But if you, mm-hmm. for me, those are the stories that I love or like the blow you out of the water, completely expand my brain. And so that's what you need to go to Cody's podcast for is the insane stories. I love um, that. I love that that you do that though. I think that's, sorry to interrupt. Like that's so no, golden that you, that you have those people on there too. Cause I agree they're, they're, sometimes there's the separation is too big. And to where people yeah. that are like, they can get there, but they just, they lose faith too early. Cause they just feel like they're so far away from that. So I think they need stories, the stories that the people that you bring on that are a little earlier on. Honestly, I've been kind of trying to make a shift to, to kind of going that way a little bit too, to try to bring on people that are kind of like a little bit earlier, but like yeah. starting to hit their breakthroughs uh, in order to fill that gap. Because I do see what you're saying. It wasn't intuitive to me at all because I wanted, I am such a big dreamer. You know, I love the big crazy story, but it was the feedback I was getting from my audience being just like, can you have someone on who's closer to maybe like a hundred sales? Because this like, you know, 10,000 sales feels really overwhelming to me. And I don't even understand what they're talking about. And I'm just like, okay, we need both for sure. Um, but so just, if you guys like though, the really exciting, you can go back and forth, like listen here and we'll have an earlier story and go to Cody and hear the big one. Um, but that is so cool. But I also wanted to ask you from the mindset stuff, because because I geek out about it. Do you personally have favorite like books or podcasts that you listen to to help grow your own? Because I know my, we don't just arrive at that mindset. It's always a growing thing. You know, like I'm constantly sure. trying to evolve higher and I know you are too. Yeah, I, I think that's such a great question. I do listen to books literally all the time. Um, oh, it's, I want the list. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's, it's funny because now, so I, I have this rule of like, I only listen to books typically of where I'm currently at, what serves me today. And what will serve me like this year. Okay. So, well, um, so I, I don't really try to like go too far out. Sometimes I'll listen to like, I'll sprinkle in a book that like takes me to like the next five year Cody or 10 year Cody that I know I need to evolve to that, that person. But I really try to stick with like, Hey, what do I need today or this year, next 12 months? So I, th- those are like the practical books, like the skills and stuff like that. Um, I'll try to like nail down some, but I'm probably going to get the I most just, value. Uh, by the way, guys, I didn't tell him I was going to ask this. This is just me going rogue as I do every episode. So he's giving me a second to think about it. Do you like Alex Hermosi? I do, although I haven't read any of his books, but I do enjoy oh. like, all of his content, but I've heard only amazing things. So I'm sure I'll get, I'll get tons of value out of them. Yeah. Audio book, especially. I, uh, I love, I have this book on repeat, The Secret. Yeah. Rhonda Byrne. Yes. Anybody that hasn't listened to that book or read that book, I highly, highly suggest they need to read this book. I read this book probably, I don't know, 50, 50 to 60 times, probably. When I say read, I mean, listen to. And Because her voice is great. <laughs> and it's just, it's so, I don't know, inspiring to me. And the, the idea that the power of thought is, it, it literally is, we are the product of our, of our thoughts, you know? And so that was such an impactful book earlier on. And it still is today. Uh, Outwitting the Devil from Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Has Love been it. absolutely critical for, for my success uh, in business and just overall my family and my life and just the way that I, I, I direct my life with intention. Uh, that is, that book has been super critical. Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad 
just the idea yeah. that mindset, that was an early book for me and it changed my life early on because I was currently, when I read that, I was like working that corporate career. I was like going eight to five. I had a tie on, uh, making $15 an hour, $16 an hour. And it was like, whoa, like, is this what it is? Is this what like it's all about here? And I read that book and I'm like, well, it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be this way. It could, it could be different, you know? Uh, and it's up to us, up to me. And so that book really, really did it. Recently, I just finished this book last night, literally, and it's called The Science of Getting Rich. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I've read that. Well, who's that author? Wal- Walter Waddles. Walter Waddles. Okay. This book was written in 1910. Mm-hmm. And the fundamentals are so true still today. And I'm just like, man, people were thinking about this stuff like back back then, you know? And and whether your goal is to get rich or not, the point is like we could have more. There's a more abundance for us to go and get. And God actually wants us to be more abundant. Yeah. And th- it's not some luck thing where it's like, oh, he was just born into that family or she was just born into that environment. So she, you know, she's rich just because of that. No. Take away all of that, like remove all of that. Like we're in control here, take control of it. And there's a, there's a method to becoming successful in your life and to your Etsy business and to your e-commerce business and to whatever your ambitions are. There is a reason why people are successful and there's a reason why people are not. And it is a simple trend line. So you just need to make the, the correct decisions at the correct time. Do you need to be hundred percent all the time? No, you don't, but you need to be generally, you know, correct and make intentional moves. And, uh, it's, you're not even guessing if I'll be successful or not. It's like you are literally yes. manifesting it and it's going to happen. So I love books like that to nerd yeah. out on. Okay. So, uh, so first of all, did you, did you start at all in like direct sales or network marketing? No, I, uh, you know, it's funny. I, um, I grew up blue collar, very, very blue collar, meaning I grew up in a small town, 1500 people. Uh, I was working, my dad was a contractor. I grew up on like tractors and like literally in trenches and stuff like that. My drilling water wells for my stepdad's business. And like, we were literally out in the field. I really early on learned that, damn, I don't want to be doing this forever. Like, this is not the thing yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, no, I fully respect everybody that works in that type of environment, but I just knew that for, sh- for sure it wasn't my calling. I just, it wasn't me. And so went to college. In college, I learned, um, I went to, I started selling Cutco knives, which is back, okay. like, I was like, sorry, this literally, was so direct sales. <laughs> like, <laughs> Cutco, and I love it. Cutco, literally. And um, yeah, so I, I, that was my first time I ever learned how to like build rapport with somebody and build a relationship with somebody and actually influence somebody to make a decision for themselves. And hopefully it's a decision, decision that, that impacts me in a positive way too. And eventually kind of burned out. I was 18 years old, of course. Yeah. Um, so I'm just like, no, this, this isn't for me. But eventually just kind of fell in love with like just building relationships with people adding value to the market as a whole, and then eventually falling into like software, which is like, how do you impact like hundreds of thousands or millions of people at a time and help more of them in an easier way? And that's what kind of led me to software, which is cool. So I have a question for you. Can I be your coach? Since 2012, I've been working with business owners and all different walks of life and helping them figure out how to grow their businesses, develop themselves, work through fears and challenges, launch a new idea, or create a very fresh vision for their life. One of my core strengths is generating ideas and casting vision on a project. And I would just love to do that for you. Whether you need coaching for your Etsy shop or a completely different business project, I'm here to partner with you for breakthrough and brainstorm brilliant strategies with you. My experience in everything from corporate America to network marketing to consulting, web design, blogging, Etsy, Shopify, social media management, and now course creation and podcasting has given me quite the breadth of knowledge to help my fellow entrepreneur. And I would be totally delighted to work with you. You can book a coaching session over at howtosellyourstuff.com or shoot me an email at lizziesmiley at yahoo.com and we'll find out if we'd be a good fit. I cannot wait to meet you and hear what you're dreaming about. Cody, did I ever tell you that my parents um, ran a software company? Like my dad wrote software and they, they, yeah, they did really well. They retired at 50. They did really well. We'll have to, I'll have to tell you more about that. Well, maybe since you're in Texas now, you need to meet my dad because I feel like the two of you would geek out big time. Oh, I love that for sure. Yeah. Because he's old school, you know, he started in the seventies. So fun. Okay. And then the other thing I had, I had to mention since you brought up um, Rhonda Burns, The Secret is, have you read any of Joe Dispenza's stuff? I have 
listen to lots of his YouTube channel, lots of YouTube yeah. videos. I don't think I've listened to any of his books or watched any of his, read any of okay, his books. Okay, so next level, you want to go like The Secret and then up. The Secret is great like for base. I love the idea yes, that you I just totally. have it in the background because it's simple and you know it's hardwiring into your brain. But if you want to get into the weeds a little bit more, like in the best way, um, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza is mm. outstanding and I could listen to it over and over again. So that's a fun one. Okay. And guys, just since we've rattled off one, two, three, four, five, six books, <laughs> I will I will put them in the show notes for you. And Cody, thank you for going down the rabbit hole with me. Oh, let's let's just move into Everbee because that's the meat and potatoes here. Tell us a little bit about how Everbee works for, you know, someone who hasn't started playing with it yet. Um and guys, just so you know, like if if you're if you started to hesitate right there, Ever, here's what's amazing about Cody. Everbee has a f completely free membership. You can you can be using it for free. Uh, it's only going to take you so far, right? But you can get in there and text drive it and play with it and get a little bit of data for free. So there's no reason every single person shouldn't have it. But tell us, I just had to say that because it's so yeah. helpful. It's so helpful. I use it a hundred times a day. So how does Everbee work? Yeah. So we started out just being a product research tool. The main thing was like when I was a seller on Etsy and I still do a little bit, um, but obviously I'm head down on Everbee now, but I sold on Amazon. So I sold on, first it was Amazon FBA, then moved to eBay, Shopify, walmart.com, and eventually I fell on Etsy. Uh, coming from all those other platforms and all those marketplaces, uh, I pretty much pretty quickly realized that when I came to Etsy, I'm like, I was trying to reverse engineer, like how do you become successful in this thing, right? And and rather than just guessing what the market wants, just selling what I'm passionate about, which is also mm -hmm. important for sure. But I was more interested in actually making an income from this thing and seeing if this thing actually like was going to work for me from a business perspective. So I immediately started looking for tools to try to understand, hey, what are people already actually buying on Etsy? And then if I understand that, then I can kind of make things kind of similar to that or like change it up a little bit, maybe add more value to the products and actually I'm, I'm basically skipping all the guessing part, right? And just go straight yes. to like, yeah. And so there was nothing like that. Um, there was like, there was keyword research tools and that would help you with like understanding what people are searching for on Etsy, but not actually buying on Etsy. And that's what I was more so interested in. So essentially that's when we were mixed with my passion for software as my, my corporate career. Uh, that's when we launched Everbee's first version was just a product research tool to understand it was a simple Chrome extension that could understand what people were buying on Etsy and it would just throw a revenue number next to each product, 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month, 2,000 a month, whatever it was. And then I'm just like, great. And that's what it started out with. Pretty soon you realize that Oh, people are getting value out of this. People start asking for keyword research and understanding competition and understanding like mm -hmm all this other stuff, then it kind of evolves. And that's exactly what happened. And then now it's evolved into a platform, right? It's not just a research tool. It's turning into a platform with lots of different tools. We have a Etsy fee calculator to understand, you know, if you're selling a shirt, you're selling a handmade product, you can understand you know, what your profit is on that product after you sell it. And it's such a basic thing that not enough people understand. Right. or I actually didn't realize that was there. Do that calculation. <laughs> and that's free for anybody to use. Like that, that tool is completely free forever. And because you need to understand your profit margins on a product. Uh, otherwise, what the heck are you doing? You know, it's, you're just throwing stuff up just to lose money. It's, that's just a waste of everybody's time. So, but that's just one product. Then we have so many other things in there too. We can ramble on day on. But I'm, what I'm probably most excited about this current moment is probably ever be email. Ooh, and okay. Yeah, because we've realized by talking to so many Etsy sellers that People have such amazing products. They have such amazing, like they're getting sales, but the problem is it's not sustainable always, right? Like sometimes you'll have like an amazing month and then all of a sudden the next month is like gone, right? Like what happened to the no algorithm? You have no control and it's not sustainable. And how can you make, how, how do you build a life off of like unpredictable, unpredictability, right? In your business, it's really hard to quit that job if you really want to, because you can't count on the money being there next month because what if Etsy's algorithm changes? Yeah. So we're really passionate about email just from an Everbee perspective. And also my past businesses, we've leveraged email to like literally grow every single business that we've ever been in and is the most underutilized resource for an Etsy seller at the moment. And I mean it like probably 1% of Etsy sellers are doing email. That's, that's how crazy it probably is. Yeah. And yeah, so we, we've, we decided about a year ago to actually build an email platform specifically for Etsy sellers. And that means that you're connect, you connect your shop to Etsy, I'm sorry, to Everbee. We will uh, automatically 
help you build your email list automatically, literally with a click. And you can start building your subscriber list based on the orders that you receive. You'll build your review. You'll get more reviews because of we're going to build a review request into that sequence as well. And then as soon as they subscribe, now you're free to email them whatever you want. So if you have a new product that's coming up, hey, I just built this, I just made this product. You now have a list that you can launch your new product to, which will help you get more more momentum in the algorithm, which will spike more sales. And it's like this cool product that's going to help propel the serious Etsy sellers from like not being predictable to being very predictable, sustainable business. And that's that's the main mission. Okay. I have been um, pushing craft kit for over a year because we so nice. desperately needed to be able to build email. The fact that now we could just eliminate that and have just ever be to, to accomplish both things is spectacular. How I'm so excited to hear this. It, does it work kind of like that or is it totally different? Cause you, I, they I'm have not just familiar with, I'm actually not really? familiar with craft kit. Um, I'm not actually, but um, I, do you want me to send you some stuff? Yeah, send, send me it um, for sure. So I guess to answer your question, if, if it works like that, I don't know exactly how they work, but how it works is essentially that we're building it to be simple. Like we're a simplified yes. global e-commerce platform. That's what we're trying to do. Like we understand Etsy sellers are not like, we are part-time, we're part-time sellers most of the time. We're full-time moms. Right. We are full-time employees. They're trying to make you, may, maybe make it out. We need simplicity more than anything. And so we're building the platform to be very, very simple. So literally, it's gonna you're gonna come into every email, you're gonna activate it, you're gonna turn on a couple sequences literally by a click of a button, and it's gonna already start running running for you. Every time you get an order, you're gonna get an automatic order order confirmation to Sally that purchased your shirts, and this it's gonna say, Hey Sally, thank you so much for you know purchasing your shirt. Again, here's your order confirmation details. Hey, by the way, do you want to join our VIP email list? And she's going to click on it. It's, she's going to go into subscriber list. And now you can email Sally anytime you want with new product launches, with discounts, all this stuff. So it's wow. a very, very awesome way to stay compliant with Etsy's terms of service, which yeah. is the most important thing. Yes. Um, but also build your email list and make sure that you're planning for those like downtimes in the Etsy world. Okay. So in a way, this is actually better than Crackit. Can you build a funnel in there as well? Soon. Yes. Um, Soon, when you say yes. funnel, okay. tell me more. What do you mean? So in theirs, it's the other way around where like you, same, same thing compliantly, they're opting in, it's automated into the, you know, you can mm-hmm. basically link it into your intro, your intro DM to the person, the customer, nice. but then it puts them into a drip campaign that you've built into craft, craft kit. So you actually have to, if you wanted to send us like a one-off email being like, Hey, I just launched this. You actually have to, <laughs> I, okay. And in fairness, I have not talk to them in over a year. In fact, it was around the same time I talked to you, not talked to you, but did the interview on podcast mm-hmm. with you. And so it may have changed, but you literally had to go like create a MailChimp or something to then import your contacts into if you wanted to do an outbound that wasn't part of the funnel. So the whole thing was you had to pre-write everything. It couldn't Got be it. a real-time email. So, but oh, I like the idea that you could have a funnel. Sure. So ours is like basically, um, if you're familiar with MailChimp, if you're familiar mm-hmm. with... Any of those emails, mm-hmm. like, all this stuff, we have the same functionalities for the most part. It's just going to be dedicated for Etsy sellers. So you can import a list directly into every email if you want. You can send out a one-time email to all of your subscribers if you want, or you can build that welcome series. So for example, if someone jumps into your welcome series, I'm sorry, your subscriber list, you can have a sequence set up to where it's like, hey, welcome series number one, welcome series number two, welcome email number three, okay. and so on. You could build sequences just inside okay. of every email. So you should never, the idea is that you'll never need another tool uh, outside not of that. Not at mm-hmm. all. Like you don't need MailChimp, you won't need any of this specifically for your Etsy business. So Cody, did I, do, did I use the word funnel wrong then? So to me, the funnel is where like when someone enters it, they're going to be sent a sequence of emails. Am I misunderstanding that word? No, I think, it, I think it's fine. I think it's okay. funnel is usually in my world. Um, funnel is uh, more of a high level umbrella term of just like, it's just a thing that looks like this, right? <laughs> and and you have a top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. And okay. that's typically oh, how yeah. it works. And typically the email sequence is usually like in the middle of the funnel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so sometimes you, people can describe a funnel, like a top of funnel of, Hey, I, my TikTok went viral and like people clicked on my link. That's top of funnel. And then they're kind of the like middle of funnel. Cause now they're in my drip, my, my email sequence. That's middle of funnel. And then typically bottom of the funnel, maybe they got like my deadline sequence or something. And they eventually purchased from me, from me at the bottom of the funnel. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes complete sense. I'm probably, yeah, 
Very interesting. The, and sorry, guys, like this is me. This is me having Cody and I'm going to ask him what I need to know too. No, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Know. Can, um, okay. And I did, did, is there a trademark checker tool now on Everbee? Did that happen or no? Is yes, that, that's it did happen. There is. Yeah, it did happen. That's funny. We moved past. It's so funny. We like built something and then we like continue to like evolve and go so quickly on it. But um, yes, we built that a couple months ago. We have a trademark. Tra- we call it trademark monitor. That's amazing. Can we talk, can we hear a little bit about how it like sources its data, how it works, how we can be using it? Sure. Well, that's the main problem that it's, the main problem we're having, right, is the sellers, sellers have, the reason why we built it is, you know, seller Sally is, has this amazing shop. She does $5,000 a month, $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month in her shop. Um, and then she has a bunch of listings and she's pu- pumping out listings all the time. She's, probably not checking every single trademark or every single keyword that she's putting on her listings, right? Just because she's, she's trying to move fast. And that's just the way that we are. We can't check everything all the time. And so then Sally puts up this awesome listing or maybe not so awesome. And the point is Etsy flags it and Etsy suspends it and takes it down because like, Hey, you, you use this word. And Sally goes, Oh my gosh, like I didn't even realize that that word is trademarked. Mm -hmm. And then Sally basically has now infringement on her, on her Etsy shop. And maybe she does it again, does it again. Eventually her shop shut down. So she has literally a $20,000 revenue stream that's coming in every single month for her that basically is gone, not because on purpose, not because she was using Disney in her, in her titles. It was an accident. And so this is, we built Trademark Monitor literally to solve that problem, to give Sally that peace of mind of, hey, do your, do your research up front for sure. But also like if you... If you're going to miss something, we'll let you know. Our trademark monitor literally will monitor every single one of your listings automatically for you. And we check it inside of our, we check it against the USPTO database Mm -hmm. every single month for you. So if anything changes, a trademark wasn't trademarked, you know, this month, but it is next month, we'll flag it. Uh, That way you can review it and make sure that it is, you know, you're still comfortable with that, with that word being in your listing, or you can go and edit it out or delete the listing completely. So it's, it's a big feature. It's a big, yeah. I would say product. There's a lot of complications with the amount of data and the amount of trademarks in there. Um, yeah. But I think that it's proving to be really valuable for the people that really are concerned about, you know, they have a thousand listings and they cannot manually check all of their listings all the time against the USPTO. I mean, did you guys literally build an algorithm to do that? Because that's amazing. We did. Yes, absolutely. That's we, incredible. It's, it, Thank you. Yeah, seriously, we honestly have an amazing team. Like, I cannot take credit for this. This is like our team is literally, our engineering team is phenomenal, and our product team as well. And everybody actually on our team is is pretty amazing because we have awesome customers that give us awesome feedback. So it makes it really easy to be honest. Yeah. So okay. So just uh, in case some of you haven't ever used Everbee, let me talk a little bit about how I use it. So when I am how do I want to approach this? Because I use a lot of different ways and I haven't used any of these new features. I'm really excited about, and I'll link all of it for you guys, but the Etsy fee calculator, the email uh, um, email f- feature. What, what, did it have a name, Cody? Yeah, I can't Everybody Everbee email. Everbee email. Okay, so I just need to reverse <laughs> these words. And then the trademark monitor. Um, my guess is you guys have videos on YouTube showing how to use those, right? Like specifically we for are. those. We're actually a little behind on that, to be honest with you. Um, it's something that we're need, we need to improve on. Because we're shipping the product, it's like we kind of fail to make the videos because that takes a little bit more time. And then the product yes. changes by the next time we ship a video. And it's like, oh, shoot, it's out of date now. Um, but yes, we certainly have videos. There's a lot of people. I'm, no, I'm noticing a lot of people making videos about them too, which is cool. Yes. I need to do so that for you. It's it's fun. It's, it's a blast. Um, one other thing that is coming out and I'm really excited about is if you're a print on demand seller that we have a, a product coming out, a print on demand service, and it's called Everbee Print. What? Yes. Yeah. So we are launching a print on demand platform as well. And that's currently in beta. Literally people are using it. They're creating listings, they're getting sales and it's working. It's not available for everybody yet, uh, but people will subscribe to Everbee or actually just be a part of the Everbee community because it's going to be a lot of free stuff in here too. Just by being a part of Everbee and having it Everbee tool, uh, you're going to have, you're going to be able to sh- like literally have access to print on demand products now. You'll be able to have your email campaigns. You'll do your trademark stuff. You'll do our predict research all inside of one platform, which is Everbee. And it's all going to be for the same subscription price. The, okay. That's utterly insane. So it would be like a replacement for Printify. Correct. Yes. Depending on the products. Because obviously Printify does a great job of like certain products. And print on demand is so big. Um, Massive. We, 
are we going to have all the same products as Printify? And are they are they going to have the same products as us? Probably not. There's going to be some overlaps. So there might be a use case, lots of use cases where they'll use them and they'll use us for certain products, but there's no problem yeah. with that. Like you can yep. do that. People do that all the time with, with print, Printful, Printify, and then something else. But certainly, yes, we'll have a lot of the same products as Printify. And then also we'll have lots of new things that Printify doesn't have as well that I believe that add, add a lot of value to Etsy sellers. Can I just plug, just because, just because, could I just plug, could you guys get some good embroidered options? Mm. That is something we desperately need better than what Printify can do. And then the other thing that we really need, this is the thing you just tell Cody, when there's something technical that you need, the other thing that we need is um, an embroidery mock-up tool. Mm. So just okay. like throwing that out there into the... Into- <laughs> No, I, th- I appreciate that. That's honestly, that's how we build most of our features. Actually, almost all of them are by we get feedback and then we go and explore it and we ask for other people for feedback and we're just like, oh yeah, it seems like it's popping up lots of times. Embroidery, got it. Like we should be launching an embroidery product line very, very soon. And obviously with embroidery products, you need embroidery mock-ups. That's just what you need typically. You do. So I will put that on the list. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I think right now Printify has hats. Printful has other options for embroidery, but I've just... I don't play with them really very much, but I think that's a huge opportunity. It's just blowing up more and more. And like, I want to be able to do, you know, sweatshirts and t-shirts and pillowcases mm-hmm. and things like that, which is, I know is a lot, but I'm just throwing that out there as. It is. Embroidery, embroidery is awesome too. Like embroidery, the quality is very, very high, of course. And yeah. the downside with embroidery, there's no, there's lots of upside. And then one downside is like the cost typically, right? For the seller, yeah. it's hard to really get that, make that margin on the, on the, on the purchase from your buyer. Yes. Um, but certainly available. And also Printful, I think I agree, they have a better embroidery option. Uh, the downside with Printful is that the cost per unit is, yeah. is is tough to make a margin with Printful. And that's why Printify has been successful is because they, they, they tend to have lower prices per unit. So you're, for the seller that's doing volumes, like they're going to go to Printify for sure. Yes. The downside well, is I, the it's, it's not like, what is your thing? Like, are you trying to just do a Gildan t-shirt that's cheaper? Are you trying to do, or you know what I mean? Or are you like, I'm going comfort colors. I want it to feel very boutique and high end. Like, what is your game? And yeah, you're right. It's it's going to come down to how much you're moving. Totally. It is. That's the fun thing about it, right? There's there's Everybody has different goals for it. Some people really want this, this Etsy thing to be their full-time business and this this is their life and they want to quit their job and they want to do that. And then yes. so there's some people that are just like, oh, Etsy, I'm doing it. I'm more of like a hobby, side hustle deal. I got my other full-time gig over year two and it's kind of like a stepping stone to help me buy my coffee shop or buy my business, right? Yes. My dream business. And that's, both of those are totally okay. Y'all, I don't know about you, but the legal stuff surrounding business really intimidates me. <laughs> like, it's not fun. It's not easy. And I generally just want to shove my head in the sand like an ostrich and hope it will go away and nothing bad will ever happen. But the truth of the matter is that we're business owners now, and that is so cool, and it takes so much courage and effort. And it would be absolutely devastating to lose it all and more, like maybe even our homes or our our family's well-being, because we didn't take a few precautionary steps in the front end to set up our business correctly. So whether you're just getting started on Etsy or you've been selling for years now but never quite got around to the legal setup, I want to make sure you know about attorney Paige Hulse and her creative law shop. Paige used to be an Etsy seller just like us, which I freaking love because she gets us, she understands the nature of our business and the Etsy platform so well, like so much better than you know, some local attorney who maybe understands like, you know, general law. She's the one person that I trust for myself and that I trust to take care of you guys for like any entrepreneurship needs. Like, or by the way, equestrian as well. If you happen to be a horsey person like she and I are, she's got a specialty there as well. So first off, I want you to know about some free resources. Um, Paige was on the podcast three times so far. So if you look for episodes 36, 61, and 86. Um, great free advice there. You can learn some of the basics from her of how to protect your, your business, how, the way you need to set it up correctly. Um, she's an absolute doll and she's smart as a whip. And also like, you're going to love the easy way that she breaks down like complicated legalese. Like I can actually, I can actually focus on what she's saying and not go blank because it's so technical. Um, you're going to love her. And also this is really important. I want you to know that she's available if you, um, especially in the United States, of course, like if you run into legal trouble or if you need to register a trademark or you have some other issue with your business that requires legal advice, um, you can just search for Paige Hulse Law. Hulse is spelled H as in horse, 
U-L-S-E. And I'll also have her sites, um, you know, of course, linked in the show notes for you guys. And most importantly, I want to make sure you know about her creative law shop because it can save you boatloads of money. Um, It's literally like a template shop for for like legal documents, the kind of things that we need all the time. So in many instances, you can just purchase a legal template from Paige directly from her site that will protect your business for a fraction of the price that you'd pay for hiring an hourly attorney. And it's going to be written a million times better than something free off of the internet. Like the stories she's told me about trying to defend people who grabbed a free like contract of some kind off the internet because they didn't want to spend the money. And then like it it cost them everything. Like they thought they were safe, but those templates are not written well and they're not written specific to like the Etsy entrepreneur. So She has so much in there. You can get everything from your LLC contract, which is super critical, a multi-person LLC agreements for partnerships if you work with more than one person in the LLC, special provisions for your Etsy shop policies if you really want to cover yourself there, affiliate agreements, influencer contracts, photography releases, and so much more. There's literally over 80 contracts available plus um, additional free resources. Her blog is incredible. And there's a lot of educational tools, like some even for purchase if you want to take like a course learning some basic business law stuff. So check it out. If you need to order something from the Creative Law Shop and you want a bit of a break on the price, you can use my coupon code SMILEY10. That's all lowercase, S-M-I-L-E-Y and the number 10, and you get 10% off and hopefully that will help. So just go to shopcreativelaw.com and there are a ton of resources waiting for you. My hope and prayer is that you'll never need to fight a legal battle, but just like we have fire insurance and car insurance for a reason, setting up your business the right way now can save you from a lot of pain later. So I really trust Paige to help you out. I actually love the constant movement on Etsy. Like it tell it, to me, it means that there's just ongoing forever opportunity that there's people coming and going like I, when people really cry about it and don't like it, I'm like, great, go somewhere else and make more space for us. That's fine. You know, and I'm obviously always encouraging people, but I want, I really care about like the Etsy culture. Like I really like the more old school, not, I mean, I love that it's print on demand and digital, but just that like, we really take pride in what we do. We really care about the customer. We're really, we're just like, you know, a smaller entity that's just going to care about giving the customer a good experience. So that's just me. But I, before before we wrap up, I did want to explain to everyone how I use Everbee because I think you're talking about all these amazing new features, which I'm so excited. This is why we needed to talk. But I just want to kind of cast vision for you guys. So if I am doing product research, let's say I'm going to create a new product and let's, we'll do print on demand. Let's say I'm going to do a kid's shirt with a raccoon on it because I have an idea for it and I know that it's trending. I would go into Etsy and I would search Um, you know, kids raccoon t-shirt or kids animal t-shirt, something like that. And then I would do my little secret filter by bestseller hack, which I will link the video for you if you don't know how to do that because Etsy took that that away. Not many people know about that. Do you know about that? You I do, but not many people do. Yes. The little, the little, the little bestseller hack, I will put that in the show notes so you can see, so you can filter by bestseller. And then I've got my search results and they show me, okay, here are the kids animal shirts that are doing really well. And then I have my Everbee extension. I'm in Chrome and I've got my Everbee extension. So the little bumblebee is going to show up in the bottom right-hand corner of every single listing right there in the search results. And I can click on it and I get a snapshot of how well that bestseller is performing. And by the way, the B will be on everything, whether it's a bestseller or not. But I can see how many sales that item has gotten, how many it's gotten recently, how long the listing has been up, what are all the tags that they used on it. And then I can click over and I can see when the shop, how, how old the shop is, how many sales the shop has, where they are. And I'm just giving you an overview, but this is the snapshot stuff that I use constantly. Like I do not do a ton of tag research anymore because I just use Everbee and I you know, look at three bestsellers and I combine together the tags from each that match my listing the best. And I know that Cody would, he would never because he's a gentleman, but he'd probably be like, Lizzie, you're missing out on all of this other function because I know there's search features and things like that. But that's just the way that I use it a hundred times a day to get a snapshot of what's going on. And then, oh, and then I'll go into a shop and I'll pull up their, all of their listings, the list of them, and I'll be able to filter to see what is their best selling item in the shop? What's getting the most sales? How many are they getting? So I know that was a lot of words, guys. I, that, I always say my, Damn, my daughter talks a lot. I that was a lot that. of words. It's a good little pitch. So, I got to use that. It, what part? <laughs> all of it. <laughs> the whole pitch. 
<laughs> okay, so just to give you an idea, like this is the crazy stuff, and um, I there's a I do have an uh, ever be overview video that covers more that I will also link for you guys so that you can see what I just literally rattled off at you. But that's before all of these cool things that Cody has added, which is why I needed him to come fill me in. So links in the show notes. That's going to be a lot of stuff in the show notes, guys. I love you so much, but. Cody, can you tell us, like, what are you looking forward to next? Like, what's kind of coming down the pike? I know that one feature you just mentioned is, but is that the big thing that you're excited about right now? Those are the big things that we're really, really excited about. I mean, really, we're passionate. We believe, like, everyone deserves the opportunity to like pursue their passions and live life on their own terms, right? This is, like, our mission. This is, like, our, our thing that we echo inside the company. And we believe e-commerce is the vehicle to help most people do that thing. And so whatever tool that we can build in order to help people achieve that, right? That to pursue their passions, live life on their own terms, give them optionality, live life on like location freedom, time freedom, financial freedom. Like those are the things that are important to my, me, to my family and to, and to our employees and to all of our users. So every tool that we think about has to fit into that criteria to help them do that using e-commerce. Uh, ever be email is the next thing that helps them do that. Yeah. And ever be print is the next thing that helps them do that. Research was the first thing to help them do that because people needed to understand that you can't just throw things up and just hope that they hope that they sell. Like you need to do research. And so we, we've solved that, I think, to a 75, 80% level, we can do better. But that's that's where we're at. And then we have, now we need to kind of do optimization and like trademarks. And then now ever be email and ever be print is the next big things that people need to be Every email needs to be happening for every Etsy seller. Like they need to be using email uh, because no one does it. It's such an easy, easy, easy opportunity, a big lever for your business to grow. And that is coming for this next quarter, quarter four, ever be print, ever be email is the next main things. That is utterly insane. And I, I mean, I could never underestimate you, Cody, because you're never going to surprise me. You are and you're not. You know what I mean? Like you're just capable of anything. But I had no appreciation that this was the bigger vision for Everbee. And like, shame on me. I should have. I'm so impressed and I'm so excited. And you have to keep us in the loop. Please, please, please. Oh, I will for sure. And this is really, um, and again, our team is literally incredible. And so are our users and customers. And uh, long term, Every, everybody's not only going to be like for Etsy, it, it, Etsy's our core, it's our, it's our main thing. But like, we understand that sellers don't only sell on Etsy, right? A lot of times people sell on, on Etsy plus Redbubble, Etsy plus Shopify, Etsy plus whatever, Amazon, Walmart. Yep. And um, so that's like the longer term vision, I would say. Cool. And I'll share that with a lot of people just because that's so big and it's so far away. Uh, it can, can appear, but that's where we're already thinking of like, we care about e-commerce and we care about the seller more than anything else. So whatever serves them best is is the main thing. And so uh, it's, it'll be a lot of work, but again, we're not a big rush for it. We're we're minimum 10 years plus. That's how I look at ever be in, in my life typically. So I kind of love that. And I, as I expand how to sell your stuff with like maybe an additional podcast and other platforms that I talk about, I would love to do that in tandem with you. Do you know what I mean? Like as you're adding additional marketplaces, I would love to be in like in lockstep with you on that. So um so many more fun conversations to be had, Cody. Uh, thank you so much. Can you tell, I will obviously link how to get a free Everbee account in the show notes, but where can we find you and connect? What are the best places to keep a better track of Everbee than I've been doing? <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, I mean, I think first of all, just sign up for Everbee. It's free. Uh, Everbee.io. It's it's free to get access to the community and, and just really get in there and play a tool and get value out of it. As soon as you get in there, you're going to you're gonna get a million emails from me probably every day. And uh, we'll be in touch just right, right there. You can always reply back to those emails and they'll kind of surface back to me at some point. And uh, aside from that, everybody has a YouTube channel that, that we do a pretty poor job, honestly, of staying up to date with to date. Um, but we do certainly do it. And you can listen to us on the Etsy Seller Podcast. Uh, you can always, always welcome feedback and trying to improve, improve on all levels. So yeah, I think that's the, probably the best way. I'm on Instagram, stuff like that too. Uh, Cody McGuffey. Although you'll be disappointed if you're looking for a lot of content. I don't make a whole lot. <laughs> you'll see mostly pictures of my family. And uh, even that, my wife is bugging me to to post more pictures and I and I should, but I just don't. And then you have a TikTok too, don't you? Everbee has a TikTok. Yes. Search at everbee.io on TikTok. We actually make a lot of content on TikTok. Jenny is, she, she is amazing at providing just so much education for anybody that looks, looks for that short form content on TikTok. And it's honestly a lot of value. And so I highly, highly suggest if you're on TikTok, check us out. Yeah, guys. So our like household name, Jenny from the shop, our print on demand girl does 
ever be's TikToks, which is completely amazing. Jenny oh is God. literally incredible. And I'm so I grateful for her as a human being and yeah. as a seller and all this other, all the above. Like she is, she is amazing. She's good people. Big She's time. just like my little business bestie. Um, okay. Thank you so much. Oh, you know what I want to say to you? One more thing, Cody. I want to tell you that your emails, the ones that come from Everbee when I get like an update of what's happening or a, um, a new podcast episode, they are so well written um, in the sense that it feels like you wrote them. Like, I just want you to know that I don't read many emails because I get too many and they always feel so corporate or so general or so over, but yours always feels so personal. So like kudos to you and your team there. Like I love the whole style of your emails. Just FYI. I just wanted to tell you that. I appreciate that. I want to say so much. And it's it's a huge, huge important thing to to me personally, but also to us just in general, like as a as an email reader myself, right? It's like these things need to be authentic. They need to be genuine. They need to come from a, a value-based you know, mentality. And if we could provide value in every email, then people t- typically like enjoy reading them. So that's, that's what we're all about is like, how do we provide value in this, in these words? And if we can, then, then we're doing great. If we don't, then we need to work on it. Above and beyond, sir. Thank you so, so, so much for your very precious time today and sharing. And you guys check it out. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. You literally just sat and listened to two friends talk, which is amazing. But until next week, go make something awesome. And I love and appreciate you guys so much. Have a great one. And that's a wrap on this episode of How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you're looking for more resources, head on over to howtosellyourstuff.com where you'll find podcast show notes, all the links from today's episode, the blog, courses, coaching, and more. If this episode was helpful to you, awesome. The greatest compliment I can receive from you is a rate, review, and subscribe on this podcast. Not only will it allow us to connect again on a future episode, it lets me know I'm providing you with value and helps other people find this content more easily. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. Have a great day and see you next time.